Hello guys, my name is Yuzhin. So today I would like to show you a painting tool I made back in 2012. Uh, it's made, it was originally made with QT4 and later migrated to QT5 and I was really surprised to see it still working in 2023. Uh, so originally it was designed as a network painting tool uh, where you can paint with your friends together over internet. Uh, well, unfortunately, some of the fun functionality uh, doesn't work now, uh, but it's open source. So if you're familiar with network, uh, I would be happy for you to have a go, have a, have a look at this uh, old legacy code and maybe you can fix it. Uh, as I don't have really much time to support this project now. So yeah, I believe this would be a demonstration mostly of what you can do in Qt and how powerful it is. And yeah, I'm really impressed that it still runs. It still runs in 2023, so I was able to get QT5 and uh, just run this project out of the box. So enjoy. Okay, let's start it and see what we have here. So initially you may see that uh, those kind of different panels are randomly spread around, so it's a known bug, but you can hit the pin and they will all be fit into your window. So we have several panels, two related to the network here, uh, but network obviously doesn't work for now. So then we have uh, to the left uh, our parameters of the brush, uh, some common menu on the top with new, open, save, uh, hot save, reload, snapshot, and this pin button. And uh, uh, okay, on the right we have layers, so we can have a lot of layers here and they support uh, multi-threading so you can kind of supposed to be painting on two layers uh, simultaneously with your friends so i will show it later uh, so blending modes okay okay so we have layers uh, and also we have different brush presets uh, so we have the fold brush so some sm smudge stuff a big filler brush and etc. So, okay. So if you hit shift, everything will be hidden. And you hit shift back again, uh, you will see all the panels and this quick panel with brush settings. So here you can, like, let me get back to the default brush. Here you can regulate parameters, color, sizes, uh, rotation of the brush so for example if it's kind of squished so you, you can set the rotation the inner radius uh, spacing and all different sorts of stuff noise and opacity on the top we have uh, a selection of tools so we have our default brush the finger also known as smudge maybe the short more pronounced we have also uh, distortion, which uses two-channel uh, encoding to create a distortion brush. So let me try and show you how, how this thing works. <laughs> yeah, so it kind of tries to tries to offset pixels uh, based on su some function. Okay, so the next thing I was actually surprised to see is that tablet support still works. So I'm using uh, old Wacom Intuos 4 uh, and uh, for each parameter of the brush we can set uh, what parameter of the pen or the stroke will control it. So I will pick up the pressure and let's see how how it affects our strokes. So I think I have also inbuilt uh, curve control for uh, the pressure sensitivity. So that, that allows us to do really, really, really fine, fine strokes. Oh, I see this brush would benefit from some spacing. The next tool that we have is a local contrast brush. So it uses local area uh, 
uh, and tries to enhance contrast, contrast based on the pixels in this area. So you see here are the washed out colors on this kind of area. So, and if we move around, we see that contrast is increasing locally. So you kind of, if you use big brush, so it will kind of create contrast of a large area. And if you use a uh, small brush, it will try to treat it as, as, as a local thing. So you see, if I try to paint the whole area, it gives different results. We have a few parameters left. One is, uh, sort of clone opacity, but um, the idea is that when you use finger, it can uh, apply the color that we have selected to the smudge itself and produce uh, really interesting effects. The next one is tool power and I believe it's used only for displacement. So it's kind of goes from minus one to one and in the middle it's kind of like zero power. So but if you amplify it you will get kind of mad, really mad distortion. And if you set it uh really low and and kind of set the space into zero so let me just add some color and yeah it, it will start to flow You get the idea. And I think yes, this uh, one last uh, really cryptic one is brush lens. So it actually sets how long is the stroke for this parameter lens. So. Yeah, if you kind of set it to opacity, you will have brush ending at some point to with with this length. So if we increase it, uh, the stroke will be will be longer. And also, it can control kind of we can set it to hue as well. So we get control it's let's set it between between let's say blue and and orange we'll kind of get those interesting strokes so yeah yeah uh, another thing is how how this uh, controls work so you have two points, uh, white and dark. Uh, white left mouse button, right uh, right button for the dark. And it um, controls 
the range at which this parameter will change. So if we send length to this parameter, so our opacity will go down from white only to black. Maybe a little bit more, let's see. Yeah, I see and it remains at this value. So what we can also do, we can randomize each parameter at uh, each point. So using middle button and it works on on all of the controls. So yeah, you can you can just go, go wild with random here. You can find the repaint project on GitHub. It's free and open source under the GPL license. So I would be happy if someone would be really brave to have a look at this old code and maybe make pull request or fix some bugs, maybe make network working again. So yeah, thank you for watching and have a good time.